everyone so welcome back to part two of the high yield biochemistry review so let's get started first we'll be talking about some vitamin deficiencies okay so a patient comes in with night blindness and scaly dry skin what do we think it is all right so this is vitamin a deficiency the key here is to think about the eyes and the skin okay these are the two things that are affected in vitamin a deficiency so the next one is a patient that comes in with confusion, ophthalmoplegia, nystagmus, and gait ataxia. So this is Wernicke's. So this is when you have a thiamine vitamin B1 deficiency. This tends to happen in alcoholics, okay? And so they're going to come in with these symptoms. Um, and as a follow-up, they can also come in with irreversible memory loss, they make up information to fill in the memory gaps called confabulation. And then the AST-ALT ratio is usually two to one. And this is called Korsakoff syndrome, okay? They can both be present. It could just be Wernicke um, or they could have Wernicke and Korsakoff syndrome together, okay? And they love to ask about treatment here. So remember, you give thiamine, then glucose, okay? Thiamine, then glucose. All right, so the patient comes in, fissures at the corner of the mouth and a red tongue. So this is gonna be a riboflavin, vitamin B2 deficiency. For this one, I always like to remember all the symptoms happen on the face, okay? So the mouth, the tongue, that's where the symptoms are gonna be. So the next condition, a patient comes in with diarrhea, dementia, and dermatitis. Okay, so this is niacin, vitamin B3 deficiency. And I love to remember this by D3 for B3, okay? So we see the three Ds of diarrhea, dementia, and dermatitis in vitamin B3. The next condition, patient comes in with peripheral neuropathy after being treated for a disease that causes fever, night sweats, and hemoptysis. So this is gonna be a paradoxine vitamin B6 deficiency. And the symptoms of fever, night sweats, and hemoptysis, I want you to think about tuberculosis. Okay, and a common treatment for that is isoniazid. And isoniazid can cause a B6 deficiency, which causes a numbness and tingling, right? Peripheral neuropathy. And so we like to supplement patients that are on isoniazid for vitamin B6 to prevent them from getting this peripheral neuropathy. So the next patient, an alcoholic or pregnant patient that comes in with low hemoglobin and hematocrit, a high MCV, a high homocysteine with a normal methylmalonic acid. So this is folate, vitamin B9 deficiency. And this one, we love to compare it to the next presentation, which could be a vegan, somebody with pernicious anemia, terminal ileum affected, metformin use with low hemoglobin and hematocrit, high MCV, high homocysteine, high methylmalonic acid levels, and also neurological symptoms like loss of touch or proprioception. So this is gonna be a cobalamin, vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay, so key things in lab values are the uh, methylmalonic acid levels to differentiate B9 versus B12 deficiency. And remember, B12 deficiency is the one with neurologic symptoms. And vitamin B12 deficiency, remember that, you know, either you're not eating enough vitamin B12, and this happens over years, and then pernicious anemia, because you don't have any intrinsic factor, which is necessary to bind to B12 and allow for absor absorption in the terminal ileum. And if your terminal ileum is affected, for example, in resection of a cancer of the terminal ileum or in Crohn's disease, then you can also get a deficiency as well. The next condition is a child that has bowed legs, rib prominence, Imaging shows physial widening and meta metaphysial cupping, low calcium and phosphate with a high PTH, and this must be supplemented in exclusively breastfed babies. So this is rickets, a vitamin D deficiency, okay? So this is really important, and remember in adults it's called osteomalacia. So the next condition is a baby born at home or a cystic fibrosis patient with bleeding issues and a high PT and PTT. So this is a vitamin K deficiency. And remember, vitamin K deficiency 
vitamin K deficiency happens because vitamin K is necessary for um, the clotting cascade to happen. Specifically, we need it for factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. The next condition, a patient that comes in with a lack of taste and smell, perioral, perianal rash. So this is zinc deficiency. Okay, the next condition, vomiting after breastfeeding, cataracts, reducing substances in the urine. So this is going to be galactosemia. In the next condition, we have a patient with watery diarrhea, a positive hydrogen breath test, decreased stool pH, and an increased stool osmolality. So this is going to be lactose intolerance. And remember, this is when patients have an intolerance to dairy products such as, you know, diarrhea after eating like ice cream, cheese, milk, things like that. So look out for lactose intolerance. The next condition, a baby that has musty, mousy body odor and intellectual disability. So this is going to be PKU. And this is going to be a deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase. So the next condition, this is going to be hepatosplenomegaly and a cherry red macula. So this is going to be Neiman Pick disease. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about the lysosomal storage disorders. And so Neiman Pick is where you have a sphingomyelinase deficiency and sphingomyelin builds up. In the next condition, we have a cherry red macula with no hepatosplenomegaly. And this is Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs is where you have a hex A deficiency and a buildup of GM2 gangliosides. In the next condition, we have a patient with bone pain, hepatosplenomegaly, and pancytopenia. So this is gonna be Gaucher's disease. And this is a glucocerebrosidase deficiency. Okay, and you get a buildup of glucocerebrosides. In the next condition, a patient's going to come in with fatty stools, night blindness, and lipid-laden enterocytes. So this is a beta-lipoproteinemia. Now we have a patient coming in with high triglycerides and a creamy layer in the blood. So this is going to be hyperchylomicronemia, and the chylomicron buildup gives us this creamy layer that we see. The next patient's going to have accelerated atherosclerosis, a family history of early myocardial infarctions, and mutation of the LDL receptors in the liver. So this is seen in familial hypercholesterolemia. Thank you so much for listening. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Good luck studying.